What's going on everybody? This is Jeff with Living in Arizona and today we are going to talk about some of the more secret spots in Arizona that people moving here might want to know about. Some of the spots that maybe the locals are more aware of than you know people who are just moving here in, within a year. So you're going to end up walking away from this video feeling like, wow, I learned about some different spots across Arizona and Arizona is probably going to seem a lot more interesting to you once you realize how much there really is to see and do. And even in this list, this isn't even like half of it. There's, there's, there's a lot more things in Arizona to do than I'm going to mention in this. But these are some of the more cool things that are, you know, people are a little bit fetishy. People might consider them to be like that. Um, I can also do a video at a later date talking about things, you know, the top things, just in case you don't know what the top things to do, like Havasupai Falls and some of those other more trendy things that there is to do in Arizona. But this one's going to focus on kind of some of the hidden gems that not everyone knows about the secrets, right? So the first thing that I want to talk about is going to be Organ Pipe National Park. Organ Pipe Cactus, okay? So these are, these are different than saguaros. They look like saguaros, but... This area here is one of the only places where an organ pipe cactus is, is raised. It's down there in the southern part of Arizona, down on the border. So if you ever go down to Mexico, you can hit up Organ Pipe National Park when you're on your way down to Rocky Point. But this, this area right now, it's closed during the government shutdown. But this place right here is a great place to hike and camp. And you just explore the beautiful, beautiful desert down there. And I think it's really worth it if, if you want to get to know beautiful nature, desert, surroundings go check out look into the Oregon Pipe National um, Park it's not that exciting but it's it's really a great place to explore for the desert probably a good time to go there would be around April or October time frame April May October or September when it's not too hot not too cold because it does get really cold down there and it also gets really hot in the summer so uh, one of those things to think about another thing that's really pretty cool that people um, have been asking me about this video comes as a matter of um, reference from people asking me hey can you talk about Jerome a little bit probably need to do a full video on Jerome but I'm kind of setting the stage to get people to understand about this place Jerome and what the big ticket what the big draw is to it right and so I don't know what that thing I'm trying a new thing with uh, screen recording but anyway so Jerome Located high on the top of Cleopatra Hill, 5,200 feet above eleva or in elevation between Prescott and Flagstaff, is the historic copper mining, mining town of Jerome, Arizona. Once known as the wickedest town in the West, Jerome was a copper mining camp growing from a settlement of tenants to a roaring mining community. Four disastrous fires destroyed large sections of the town during its early history, resulting in the incorporation of the city of Jerome in 1899. Arizona is a new state, the Wild West. I mean, so a town that was established like this back in the turn of the century is actually in Arizona. It's considered an older town, and it's now become the largest ghost town in America. So if you're into that kind of stuff, it's up there on that hill on the way towards um, in between Flagstaff and um, Prescott, depending on which way you're coming in. But it's really worth taking a look at it. I think a lot of people, if they, they could make a... You know, you can go up there once or twice and, and kind of see what's going on. But you've got all types of different stories here, the Prostitution Row. And, you know, it was an old copper mining village. So lots of history in that. And Jerome, it, it really deserves its own video and we can go more into it. But I'm letting you guys know about this place, Jerome, because it's, it's people like it. I mean, I... I I only spend about three hours when I go there, two hours, three hours, which means I have lunch and I go walk around a little bit and that's about it. I don't I don't like hang out there all day, but it's 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 cool to see. Another place that people don't really know about that is worth mentioning here, they know about Flagstaff and they know about Coconino, but they do they know about the White Mountains. The White Mountains are past the Mogollon Rim and it's in an area called Sholo. As a matter of fact, I'd like to buy land up in that area over there by Strawberry, Snowflake, uh, Heber, Overgard. That whole area up there is beautiful. They've got Pine Top Lakeside. And this this kind of countryside is, I mean, it's like the Ozarks up there meets Yosemite, kind of. And if you, if you want a white Christmas, let's say you're from Chicago and you're like, hey, I want to go spend, uh, I want to have a white Christmas and be in the snow. You go up, you go up to the White Mountains, you'll be in snow. I mean, we're talking 
knee-deep snow in beautiful pine trees and stuff like that. That's here in Arizona. I mean, it, it's beautiful up there. This is just an idea of the, some of the terrain that it looks like up there. You can see these meadows, um, kind of like Alaska a little bit, Oregon. You know, it's high country. It's just got a lot to see and do up there. So if you're if you if you're worried about these not having enough beautiful recreational spots to go that are high high alpine or high altitude, have no fear. Arizona's got that. But in particular here in um, the White Mountains. So let's go ahead and keep on moving here and go on to the next uh, subject here. The, the doorbell just rang. That was the UPS guy. <laughs> anyway, so the next one that most people know about, but I felt like I should include it in this list, is Tombstone. So don't forget about Tombstone. This is another Southern Arizona thing. So when you're exploring Southern Arizona, you're thinking about Oregon Pipe National Park. You're thinking about um, Tombstone and Bisbee, which I'm gonna mention later on in this video. But Tombstone is where the OK Corral is. It's got a deep history. It's kind of like the the uh, Jerome environment. You know, they do these mock cowboy things. So it's got the Old West atmosphere, town too tough to die, Tombstone, Arizona. This is wider, Doc Holliday. You guys know about these guys from the movie, the OK Corral, Tombstone. But it really is, it has a rich history. Nowadays, it's nothing. I mean, it's just it's just for show. It's, if anything, it's like a, it's like a reenactment place. But Tombstone at one point in time was really a boom town. And it was uh, maybe even larger than Phoenix when it was in its prime. So that's... Cool to know, but it's a place to check out if you want to get familiarized with, you know, spend a, spend a weekend driving from Phoenix down to Tucson, stay the night down there and come back, or drive down to drive down to Tombstone and then stay a night in Tucson, and then you come up to spend the weekend in Tucson and Tombstone and Bisbee. You can do it all, you know. Better better hotels in Tucson is what I'm saying. Now, Northern Arizona has some cool places too. And this is Canyon de Shea. It sounds like it's called Canyon de Shelley, but it's actually pronounced Canyon de Shea. This place is basically the epicenter of the Navajo Nation. So um, you can see the beautiful rock formations. This is not the same as the Grand Canyon. This is on the other side of the state. This is closer to New Mexico than Grand Canyon, which is closer to California, Nevada. And not a lot of people know about Canyon de Shea. It's just a matter of time before these places get picked up and, you know, the Instagram community starts to grab a hold of it and start going there and making it famous. This is one of those places, just like Havasupai Falls wasn't really too famous in the 80s and 90s, and now all of a sudden everyone wants to go to Havasupai Falls. Canyon de Shea has got the same kind of environment where there's just some amazing things down there. And th this place right here, I mean, look, you can see the, the Native American ruins that are in there. You've got, I've camped down in Canyon de Shea. It's amazing camping down there. It's on a, Na a Native American Indian reservation though. So it's in the Navajo Nation. That's one of the reasons it, it's hard to commercialize it. Then again, the Havasupai uh, Native Americans also have the reservation down at the bottom of the Colorado River in the Grand Canyon, right? But Canyon de Shea, take a look at this place. They've got a government website. You're noticing a lot of these, Arizona has a lot of national parks. We've already talked about Canyon de Shea. Saguaro, or uh, they've got Saguaro National Park, they've got Grand Canyon National Park, Oregon Pipe National Park, so many places. Another one that we're going to talk about is the Petrified Forest National Park. This is where you have the painted desert, you also have these trees. So Petrified Forest National Park is located in the greater painted desert. So a lot of people think they got to go to Peru to see Rainbow Mountain, but Arizona has that rainbow colored dirt. And you can get the Painted Desert right there. While the Painted Desert encompasses about 1,500 square miles, the park is about 150 acres and not desert. Actually, the main environment is short grass, prairie, and intermountain basin, semi-arid grassland. So it's kind of like a little bit higher than high desert. But explore the varied species that make make it home. And you've got these uh, pronghorn sheep. You've got, or pronghorn, I don't know, pronghorn deer? <laughs> pie, t pie whitetails. I'm not familiar with the deer. I'm not actually, I didn't grow up in Northern Arizona. I grew up in Phoenix. So I've been up there, but I don't know about the wildlife up there. I know that these deer look kind of cute, I guess, Bambi. <laughs> Environmental factors you could see. 
There's some interesting pictures, but you can go on this website and dig around and learn more about the Painted Desert, another place that you'd want to go camping. Um, so you've got all of these cool things that I'm showing you here. Like I said, the White Mountains, you know, beautiful place. Tombstone, Canyon de Shea, Bisbee. Now Bisbee is another one of those places like Jerome and Tombstone that have a rich history, for, former boom town that's kind of just fizzled down. You know, the, the, the places that were hot in the turn of the century didn't end up becoming the big cities like Tucson, Flagstaff, Phoenix. Well, T Flagstaff's not a big city. <laughs> but Bisbee is a U.S. city in the Cochise County, Arizona, 92 miles southeast of Tucson, according to the 2000 census. Population was 5,575. It's close to Nogales, close to the southern border. So... It's way down there. Again, this is in a weekend trip or a week trip. You could do Bisbee Tombstone, Organ Pipe, Tucson, Mount Lemmon, all that in one little journey. And you might end up feeling like, hey, the first time you went wasn't good enough, so you got to do it again. And there's a couple other things down there. There's Sonoran Desert you can explore. Lots to do down there in Southern Arizona. And I can make a whole video about Southern Arizona all, all in of itself, there's, as you can see. But this is just setting the stage to show you there's a lot to do down there and all across the state. But the mining industry was what built this. You go to Bisbee, you see these big holes in the ground. Down in Southern Arizona, they, they did some massive mining excavations where they would drive those big trucks and they would just circle around and just carve out the big hole. And that hole becomes like a canyon. I mean, it's very deep how deep they build these mining ex excavations. Open pit mining is what it was called. And this was happening during World War One. So it's when you see these big holes in the ground, this stuff goes all the way back. They were looking for uh, an oxide mineral composed of copper, which is called coprite. Aragonite is a carbonite mineral, one of the three most commonly natural occurring crystal forms of calcium carbonite. Wolfenite, okay. Malachite, this rock right here is, uh, it's got that blue. So if you ever look at copper when it gets stained from the, the rainwater, it turns this bluish color and that's kind of like what you have with this malachite right here. And then you have galena and you have azurite. There's lots of minerals here in Arizona. And that's a whole other video I can make all in of itself. All of the minerals that come, in, come from here. Amethyst, uh, um, malachite, you've got hematite, you've got uh, jasper, turquoise, so many different minerals and, and rocks. That's why they have the Tucson Gem Show. I think that would be a good video to talk about that Tucson Gem Show because Tucson Gem Show is one of the biggest in the world and people come from far and wide to go to that. But the the mining here, as you can see, it was it was a big thing and they've got copper and all, all that different stuff. But now it's just known as like kind of like a ghost town a little bit. It's a really small place. I don't even know if you can find a Motel 6 down there. I mean, it's that kind of small. Kind of like Tombstone, you you probably have to stay and make it a day trip from Tucson. You go down, stay stay the night in Tucson and drive down to Bisbee, ninety two miles, or drive to Tombstone on the way. Do both Bisbee and Tombstone, right? Same day. Back to northern Arizona, there's a place up there. I've talked about this in a couple other videos, but this is Meteor Crater. This is just outside of um, Flagstaff. The drive out there, it's like the moon. It's like the moon out there. It's moonscape. They've, some people have said that this kind of meteor crater could have wiped out the dinosaurs. I mean, it, it was a big rock that slammed into the earth and it's carved out this big hole, as you can see. There's the visitor center. You can't, I've never actually gone inside there, but they've got like this, this museum that you walk around. I mean, it's one of those places you hang out with, hang out for two hours and you get some information and then you're moving on, right? All right, so that's meteor crater. They've got a website you can check out. They've got just a modern website. I mean, our modern historical place for where a big meteor slammed into the earth. It's off of Interstate 40 and Old Route 66. If you want to take Route 66, that's where it's at. Another one that's kind of interesting. This is not in Canyon de Chez. This is outside of Canyon de Chez, but it's, a, it's called Montezuma's Castle. This is a Native American relic. It's not on the level of Machu Picchu. Or maybe even uh, Mesa Verde. And it's kind of like Mesa Verde. So what you can get in so southeastern Colorado with Mesa Verde, you can get in Arizona with Montezuma's Castle and Canyon de Chez, where these dwellings are built into the cliffside and they're you know adobe or, or made of mud. 
and they're really interesting. So Montezuma's Castle National Monument along with Montezuma Well. Montezuma Well is, you can't swim in it, but it's this deep hole that, create, that is like an aquifer. People really find that to be interesting. So in the area, you would do Montezuma's Well and Montezuma's Castle. It's, it's one of those things that you do on the way to Sedona. So if you're driving from Phoenix to Sedona, you stop on the right-hand side just outside of Camp Verde and you check out Montezuma's Castle. It's right along the road. You can It's like a 30-minute hike there and back, right? Depending on how long you want to stay. But life on the inside, you know, you can go through all this. It's called Montezuma's Castle. Play, kids go there for field trips. It's another National Park Service monument. And, uh, yeah, it's cool, right? I think it's cool. Last one I'm going to talk about here is going to be the London Bridge. I've known about the London Bridge for a while being in Arizona. This is the real London Bridge. The bridge that was in London that went across the Thames River is here. As a matter of fact, it's funny because when I was in London, they were talking about, I drove over the new London Bridge and they talk about, you go on those big buses, those tour uh, multi-decked buses, and they'd say, yeah, the... The old London Bridge is actually in Arizona. I'm like, gosh, Arizona? They sent the London Bridge to Arizona. But yeah, it's really there. It's in Lake Havasu City. He took apart all the bricks, shipped them all over, and rebuilt it right there in the middle of the desert. A weird place to take the London Bridge, but the guy wanted it. He was a very rich guy. Um, but let's see, what was his name? He just wanted to preserve it. Uh I don't know his name. I, I'd have to check it out. But yeah, I think this is him. American entrepreneur Robert McCullough standing on London Bridge as it is dismantled, ready for transportation back to America, April 18th, 1968. So this really rich man wanted the history of London in Arizona on the across the Colorado River in Lake Havasu City. So I hope this uh, at least gives you guys some insight into some of the some of the secret things to do that locals tend to know about. It's going to make your move to Arizona a little bit more exciting because now you know there's a lot to see and do. So you're not going to be bored when you come to Arizona. Some places you're like, well, what, what is there to do? Arizona, now you know there's a lot to do. And by the way, guys, there's a lot more places. There's Roosevelt Lake with this big dam you can drive all the way up there. There's Chinle. There's... Um, you know, all this air, desert to explore out there by Wickenburg. You've got, I didn't even hardly even mention the area around Flagstaff or Prescott here. You know, in the Coconino National Park, that whole area. The Bradshaw Mountains, Crown King. I could probably even mention, I mean, there's so many places I could mention. Crown King is a cool place to just go up there on a day trip and explore from Arizona uh, on the Beeline Highway. You got, I didn't even mention Payson or the Mogollon Rim, but there's... I can do this all in another video too. Like there could be a part two to this or I could do the real tourist places like Route 66 and Grand Canyon and, you know, the, those kind of Sedona, which we've already kind of talked about. But anyways, if you're new to this channel, thank you for, to, uh, for subscribing. If you'd like, hopefully you will. And keep this channel growing so that we can keep putting out information. And thank you to everyone who's been liking these videos. So we'll see you guys next time.